Hey everybody, and welcome to Medical Facts. Today's topic is lung cancer, a critical health issue affecting millions of people worldwide. We'll go deep into the understanding of this condition from its causes and treatments, and to start unraveling some of the complexities of the disease. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths globally. It actually accounts for more cancer deaths than the next four cancers combined which is something considering that things like breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer in terms of mortality are very small compared to the number of deaths caused by lung cancer. Part of the problem is that a lung cancer can grow for quite some time without any symptoms or outward signs. As a result, 75% of the time when we diagnose someone with lung cancer, it is already metastatic and therefore incurable. With a cancer on your nose, it doesn't have to get very big before you to notice it and go to the doctor and get something done about it. But the lungs are a big wide open space and until a tumor is blocking an airway or causing an infection or some other issue systemically, it can go undetected and even be the size of a, of a grapefruit before somebody even knows they have it. For this reason, early screening has become a thing in the last 10 years or so where people that have more than 15 pack years, meaning one pack a day for 15 years or the equivalent math, qualify to have an annual CAT scan to look for early cancers that are still at an early stage that could be cured with surgery. The vast majority of lung cancers are caused by smoking exposure, though other exposures such as asbestos can increase the risk, as well as exposure to radiation such as radon gas from houses and this sort of thing. And, Sometimes family history and genetic factors play a role. Occasionally we see non-smokers with lung cancer, but more commonly a cancer in the lung of a non-smoker is metastatic from some other organ as the primary tumor. Identifying cancer symptoms is important as well. Coughs that don't go away without other explanation, shortness of breath that's not otherwise explained, chest pain, coughing up blood, which is a worrisome finding, unexplained weight loss, fatigue, these sorts of things sometimes indicate a cancer, not always from the lung, but nonetheless are worth getting evaluated to find out what the problem is. The risk factors we already talked about with uh, smoking exposure, people always ask about secondhand smoke, and it's so rare to find a non-smoker in general, it's hard to believe secondhand smoke could be too much of a factor with lung cancer, but it is an issue in some cases. The diagnosis of a lung cancer requires a tissue diagnosis, meaning a biopsy of something. You can look at it on x-ray and be pretty darn sure, but you're not gonna start somebody on chemotherapy without proof, and nor do surgery to remove part of the lung necessarily if you can possibly avoid it without having some sort of a proof of the diagnosis. This is also important even in cases that are non-operative because the different types of lung cancers respond differently, have different prognosis, different rates of growth, and there are different recipes for various treatments such as chemotherapy or even immune therapy that is used for these that depends a lot on the chemical nature and genetic nature of the cancer involved. We usually start out with a chest x-ray and sometimes the CAT scan and sometimes lung cancers are cured because somebody gets in a car wreck leading to a chest x-ray they might not have otherwise had and they accidentally find a tumor before it is um, symptomatic. I've seen this happen several times. A PET scan is also done to evaluate whether a tumor is metabolically active. A CT scan is basically looking at shadows to look at the size and shape and density of a mass, but doesn't tell you whether it's growing or not. With a PET scan, you're given radioactive sugar and things that are actively growing and metabolizing will light up on the scan. Obviously, there are certain parts of the body that are always eating sugar, such as your heart. If you're not dead, your muscle in the heart is moving and eating up sugar. Your brain is always eating sugar, so those areas always light up on a PET scan. But the lungs, for the most part, are a passive organ. It just lays there, and there should not be any PET activity in the lung or in the lymph nodes, for that matter. And any activity there is highly correlated with cancer or at least inflammatory conditions determining, depending on the degree of um, uptake on the PET scan. Treatment plans, the ideal is to have surgery to have a cancer removed. But for this to be curative, the surgery has to be done before the cancer has had a chance to spread to some other part of the body. A PET scan is part of the staging workup to find out if indeed there is spread to other parts of the body, but the PET scan has a limitation in that it cannot really see things that are smaller than eight millimeters. 
and even a single cancer cell somewhere else in the body eventually will double in size and grow to be a tumor that could cause treatment failure. Overall, lung cancer surgery has about a 50% cure rate, and this is knowing that we don't operate on people generally that we already know there has been spread. So that tells you that 50% of the time there has been no spread and they're cured, and 50% of the time, maybe a year or two later, a tumor pops up elsewhere showing that the cancer had already spread but was just not detected preoperatively. Screening guidelines I already mentioned, a low-dose CT scan annually for people at high risk of lung cancer, uh, meaning people that had more than 15 pack years of smoking history and had quit less than 15 years ago, can help detect early cancers. But one downside of screening is that you detect a lot of benign lesions that need follow up and some of those benign lesions lead to biopsies and some biopsies have complications. So it's not a slam dunk as far as the benefit, but the benefit does outweigh the risk, but it is not totally without risk to do screening. It's obviously life-changing to be diagnosed with lung cancer. It affects the physical and emotional and mental well-being and support groups for cancer as well as family support are very important in helping people stay on course. There are some people that have advanced cancer that maybe treatment doesn't make sense. If patients are given chemotherapy, for example, for most lung cancers, for fast-growing cancers, the response to chemotherapy is very good, and without chemotherapy, some cancers have a survival time of less than, less than two months even. Uh, but for other cancers, it's more of an incremental change. But in general, people given chemotherapy for lung cancer live a little bit longer, but they mainly live better, meaning they maintain their functional status longer. Good functional status might mean that you're playing tennis twice a week, while bad functional status might mean you can't get out of bed. So the people getting chemotherapy maintain their ability to live their life longer than the people without chemotherapy. They also tend to lo lose less weight when they're on chemotherapy. But there are some patients, perhaps with advanced age or other conditions that are also severe, that have a small, slow-growing cancer, and it's not always unreasonable to elect to not have any treatment because sometimes the other diseases will cause the person to die before the actual cancer will. And many people don't want to spend the rest of their life having cancer treatment if they have other things to do. It's always an individual decision. And our job as pulmonary physicians is to explain what type of cancer there is if we make that diagnosis, what the predicted outcome is, what the predicted response to treatment, and what are the treatment options and the patients and family members can help decide together with their physician what the best course of action is. But I've had more than a few patients that just going fishing was probably the best option. In closing, lung cancer is a complex disease with significant impact both on society and the healthcare system and with patients and their families. Hopefully this has given you information you need to understand the basics of lung cancer as well as prevention, which is mainly about not smoking. Thank you for tuning in to Medical Facts. If you found the vid video informative, please like and share and subscribe for more in-depth health content as, various, as well as various other things that I post on the channel from time to time. Take care and see you again next time.